Welcome to Beans and Breakdowns, a podcast dedicated to bridging the gap between specialty coffee and the heavy music community. On this episode, I'm joined by Kevin Muller, vocalist of the band Alluvial. So grab a fresh cup of coffee and wake the fuck up! What's going on, Caffeinated Crew? Today, I'm joined by Kevin, vocalist of the band Alluvial. He's been in a few other bands. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of a band called Suffocation. Had some time in that band and also the Merciless Concept. What's going on this morning? Not much. Caffeinated and ready to take over the goddamn world. Hell yeah. We got we got half rolled up <laughs> condom beanie crew on, the, <laughs> on Zoom this morning. Hell yeah, dude. Dude, I have a short story with this. I know it's not important, but I put on this beanie as a joke. I was in a uh, van store in, what the hell, Belgium, and I exchanged a pair of van shoes, and the guy was so, the the manager was so nice that I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to buy this hat. And I put it on as a joke thing, and like, oh, this is trendy, but I was like, fuck, it fits real nice. It feels (laughs) real good. I'm actually going to buy it. And then it was half off. I was like, fucking roll it. Like, send it, dude. I'm I'm, I'm taking it. Straight up, I, I was at a store here. In Montreal, put this hat on, and my wife always makes fun of like the the short beanie kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put it on. She's like, "That actually looks really <laughs> good on your head." Yeah, yeah. That's, so that's now, exactly the emotion I have with mine. Yeah. I was like, "Damn!" Like, I have no reasons not to buy this right now. Everybody wants to clown on them condom beanies, but they they <clears> they do the thing. There was a hat that I've seen out there where it's literally like a dad hat with the bill removed have you seen that one yeah it's the fisherman's hat right but it's just but it's just a fucking denim little cap with the fucking with the tab on the back and i'm just like that might be stretching it i think that is as that is the line for me this is right before it i think yeah this is i think i can't i can't go any more than this i've Mm. tried on those fisherman's hats and they just they make me look like a cartoon character is how I feel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, yeah, you, you end up, there's a whole personality and, and history for those kind of hats that you're now taking in, <laughs> you know, but these I use as a secret weapon to like straighten out the hair going slick on. The, so, slick the hair back. Yeah. This is pushed back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is, I, I, I like it. I like it. It's working. Yes. It does little to nothing in the winter when it's like 30 degrees out. Like right now, if I walked outside, I'd have to put my hoodie on top of the beanie Mm -hmm. to actually get it to work. So Mm -hmm. this one is like a weird comfort blanket. My stream makes fun of it all the time. Like, look at you in your too small hat. I'm like, yeah, but like when it's there, I don't have hair like touching my face. Exactly. So it's all just perfect and everything's confined. And like, I'm also the guy that likes my, my shirts to like perfectly have the collar in one place and the, then the sleeves have to fit a certain way where I'm just like, everything is fine in the world. Otherwise I'll be fucking with it all day and moving it and you know, yes. Fidgeter. Yeah. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm sure that there's some anxiety link there. Cause I have oh, for sure. a lot of those same problems where yeah. I don't have like nails cause I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, constantly yeah. fucking, so, I don't bite mine. Thankfully. Are you a biter? Yeah. I've been trying to get on like silly putty or something. Mm. My wife's always yelling at me. <laughs> She's like, stop biting your nails. You're going to lose yeah. your thumb. Like, Oh, fuck's sake. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do have to cut it, though, all the time. When I'm on the computer and I feel like my pinky nail touch a keycap, I'm like, well, time to go. That's it. That's it. That's when it has to go. Oh, God. <sighs> what, what, what what kind of coffee you got over there? I, um, I'm i very particular. I'm bougie, but not really. I'm the budget bougie where, like, nice. it's a dirty chai. Ooh. And I do uh, Trader Joe's espresso. And I do Oregon, Oregon chai, Oregon chai, Oregon chai. I never know how to say Oregon. Um, and then I use uh, Chobani oat milk, the extra creamy one. You had that like, Chobani. Yeah. Chobani oat milk is the only oat milk I will drink because the rest just tastes like it's dirty Cheerio water. <laughs> you know, like it's just like the leftover of someone else's bowl yeah. for most oat milks where, where Chobani just nails it. It, it just t- tastes great. So yeah, that's, that's semi bougie. You know, you got the Trader yeah. Joe's in there. I just used to go to, it was like, I discovered what I really liked at Starbucks. And I know that sounds so like, you know, 
whatever. Like I'm just about to go to the mall and meet up with my friends and go to fucking Lululemon and get an ice chai, you know, and like, but I would always get that stuff and it was like nine bucks, eight bucks a fucking cup. And I'm like, no, like I'm done with that. I can't, I can't do this to myself where I'm like, I'm going to go buy a $30, a little shitty espresso maker. It'll do exactly what I need it to do. I'm mixing it so much down with chai and uh, oat milk and that I'm just like, what, what's the point? Why would I, yeah. I don't care. I don't want like a two grand, nine grand fucking espresso maker because I'm not going to utilize it. I'm not going to have a nice little perfect little thing. You know, I'm just always going to have this monstrosity of sugar and caffeine. So it's fine. I don't need it. I don't need quality. At that point, as long as you have good chai, then you're set. Right. So that is the base. That is the base. Yes. Um, I do love a dirty chai. I've been getting on matchas, matcha okay. lattes. Nice. Uh, it's a little bit, it's like the $9 thing that you're talking about, but right, right. basically you can buy for 15 bucks. You can buy enough matcha to make about 30, Okay. 30 of these matcha lattes. And I, I think if you put everything together, it's like, comes out to like 250 mm. if you make it at home. So I, I tried it for the first time yesterday. That shit hits. It's good. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, I'm just all about that home rig. That's I, I think that's the move. I think I think a lot of people don't respect the home rig. Everyone's going out and going to like the new spot Gregory's out here or like oh. Starbucks or you know, it's just it's just robbery. They want all your money. Are you you're still on Long Island? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I have uh some some friends from the scene over there. Shout out Koyo. Nice. Hangman. The boys, the boys. Uh who else am I thinking of? There's a right few. now Pain of Truth. Dude, pain of motherfucking truth. <laughs> That's a good ass band. Yeah. Shout out I mean, days before he abandoned Long Island to go to Connecticut, right? <laughs> I just I know Killa and you know, I've I haven't talked to him in a while, but Killa and Smith and you know, shout out to Danny Smith too. I miss Danny Smith. I haven't seen him in forever since I think the last time I saw him was the last backtrack show. Damn. But love the boys. You want to talk about like, you want to talk about getting into hardcore in 2008? Sure. Backtrack. No, I'm, sure. gonna, <laughs> I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm in. I'll tell you what I'm drinking. I've got something called uh, Toto. It's yeah. a Sheka Ethiopian coffee, um, which I guess is why they call it Toto, because Africa. That's funny. Nice. nice. Uh, it's from Ambrose Coffee here in Montreal. Nice. Beautiful little drawing on the bag. And I brewed it at home with a new brewer I picked up yesterday. It's called a Hario Mugen or Mugen. Okay. Um, very, very cool. If people listening, if you're uh, a little bit intimidated by doing the whole pour over thing, which is what I usually do, like it's like science and shit. Mm -hmm. This one, you literally just measure out your coffee and then you pour like a certain amount of water in and it automatically just drips down for you. So it's, it's almost foolproof, um, which made a great cup this morning. So mm. it's delicious. Tastes kind of like apricot. A little bit of a uh, pear. Ooh. Super, super clean taste. Yeah. Hell yeah. You got a nice little cup too. Is that one of those cups you can't knock over? No, I'm no, uh, but I should maybe invest in one. <laughs> this is I a, have one. I just never use it. This too is small. like, this is like the hipster bullshit version of a Yeti cup. So oh. if you're not a redneck, it's, it's a keep cup, but it's, um, it's a thermal. So okay. it's, it basically does the same thing. I kind of have the same kind of thing. This one. This is like some uh, futuristic looking one. I That's hate nice. it because I didn't, when I, when buying it, I was walking through like a Macy's or something. And I was just like, oh, that looks, it like feels good. Like I'm, I used to work for Apple. So I was always like a sleek, like a, I was just, yeah, like a sleek, pro, like it literally looks like a Mac pro. You know what I'm it saying? Does, like, it does look like a trash can. Yeah. Right. So I was just like, damn, it's metal. Damn, it's shiny and it fucking sick. But then I bought it, used it. Doesn't fit in my car cup holder. It's done. <laughs> Don't you it's, love that? It's now a glorified fucking mug for the house. And I I think I lost the top because of why I close it. You know, I'm home. But it, when it's closed, it looks like a time capsule. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just literally this little like pill. And Is it the fellow? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. It looks yeah. so nice. You see, I, he knows it. <laughs> I'm a, no, this is stupid. But I, I'm a huge, like, uh, I love gear, like coffee. Well, this is for musicals, like music sure, stuff sure. too. But oh, I'm dude, a, I got a Pelican phone case. I get it. Like, yeah, it's I'm just, a gear guy. <laughs> so I have like, you know, the fellow kettle where you put, set the temperature, push the button and it holds the temperature for an hour. Like, Bam. 
yeah, like I'm trying to get a new grinder just because I like the way that the one looks and not yeah. even because. Oh, yeah. So it's it's all bullshit. But it. Oh, dude, I get you 100 percent. It makes me feel better. You know? Yeah. We chase the dopamine. It's just like, hey, there it is. I like that. I want it. Money? What's that? I'm not who, sure. Who Let's cares? just get that, though. We're going to lose it at some point anyway. Right. Why not Can't take it, it with me. Exactly. Can't take it with me when I die, dude. Give me that fucking <laughs> mug right now. Can I write this off as a podcast expense? <laughs> that's basically yeah. what it comes down to. Yeah, that's smart. Um, that's awesome. What? So your favorite, your go-to drink is, is a, is it a dirty chai usually? My, for coffee, yes. I don't really, dude, it was so funny. For years, I hated coffee. I had a horror story when I was a kid. I was running around the house as like a fucking seven-year-old, right? Just, just wrecking shit. And then I, I remember my great-grandmother used to always hang out upstairs whenever I stayed at my grandparents' house. And my great grandmother would be upstairs and she poured like a cup of the blackest coffee you'd ever, ever see, but she'd keep it around like all day in a plastic cup and nice. sip on it. So I had poured a glass of Pepsi for myself, maybe an hour prior. And it's just around, you know, I'm a kid. I'm fucking leaving my toys here and there. And I, I thought this was my Pepsi and I'm like sweating thinking of like, just like a kid doing zoomies. And I fucking picked up that cup and chugged it. And it was just this gross fucking like, I don't even, I don't even know what she was making, you know? And I don't know if she knew what she was making, but it's just the blackest car. It tastes like cigarette water that was out all day. And I just drank it. I was like, fuck coffee forever. I'm never <laughs> having it. And then forever I was tainted when I saw people go to Starbucks. I'm like, how can you drink that shit? But I had no, I never looked into it again until I went on tour. My first like States Canada tour with this band Pyrexia. And uh, we actually were in, or we, we, it was a Canada run, but we, I don't remember where we were, but it was a McDonald's. Shout out Chris Basile, Doug Bone. They needed to have their McDonald's coffee in the morning to function as human beings. So I was always just like, I'm hungry and bored and I'm tired. Maybe I'll just, I'll try a coffee. And I got like this vanilla latte thing to sweeten it up. And I was like, damn, that's good. <laughs> it's just, I remember being so like, yo, this can change my life forever. And I, I just kind of like started dialing in. I was like, all right, maybe I don't want that much milk. Maybe I don't want that much, you know, flavor. Maybe it's too sharp. Maybe it's too sweet. And now I found that perfect middle where like the chai flavoring is just great. And in Europe with their powder, it's like way more sweet than the way we do it here, which yeah. you would never think that. But um, the bite of the espresso after is just primo you know it's great so that's been doing it for me do you have besides like starbucks and your home setup is there a spot in long island because i i know a lot of coffee people that yes between brooklyn and long island there's it's insanity like say i don't know if you know say coffee say uh no i don't know they're like in brooklyn i believe but see i'm such a i'm such a city noob because i by, I just go there for like Gramercy and Irving Plaza and mm -hmm. venues, you know, uh, but like when, when it comes to like checking out spots, I'm never there long enough to, to go and spend that money there, you know, where there's a place out here called Witch's Brew. That's right by the mall. That sounds and dope. it's, it's just the perfect, like <laughs> alt Instagram spot to go to <laughs> and like be, say you're there, you know, it's just one of those places. But, uh, yeah, their whole menu is all like punk as fuck. Sick. Um, but they have really good coffee. Uh, I'm trying to think where else I would go. There's um, there's definitely a few spots. Dude, it's like uh, I'm such a simpleton too. If it's if it's not a dirty chai, I'll just go get like a French vanilla iced coffee from a deli, you know. And there's delis near me that slap. Um, but yeah, for hmm, I, I mentioned Gregory's before. Mm -hmm. And that, I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's like a state's chain or if that's just for Long Island, but like it looks, it's pretty much like a dollar store. How does shit even say dollar store? It's a, it's another Starbucks. Okay. Same price and kind of shit, but it's more like clean cut looking for the aesthetic, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's about it. It looks like it's just around uh, New York. Oh, okay. Then that's probably what it is. Yeah. Sounds good though. Yeah. But you should look up that witch's brew place. You'll see the outside of the place and be like, ah. I I'm gonna check it. it out. It sounds a lot like uh, Black Forge, which is in Pittsburgh. Mm. Um, shout out Ashley. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they do cool stuff. They're like a venue coffee shop roastery. Nice. So they bring a lot of like cool metal bands through Pittsburgh and stuff like that. So they actually nice. did a collab 
or they were going to do a collab with Code Orange, mm. like right when the pandemic was like shutting everything down, they were supposed to re- release a coffee with Code Orange mm. uh, before they I'll, did the WWE theme songs and stuff. I'm going to do a funny shout out for a friend. There's uh, my buddy, Nick, who tour manages for a bunch of bands. He has his own coffee company that he's been working with or working on uh, is Malacca Coffee. Oh, he's been doing like signature little like um, he did a a flavor for like Alan Cassidy from Black Dahlia. He's been doing like I think he's making one for DSI and stuff. So he's always he's 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 always like the merch guy on tour. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So he's like he's been improvising at home with this coffee thing. And it's it's good. So he's going to laugh hearing that because I always charge him a dollar to say it on my stream. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, get that shit out of here. But no, it's what a better time to bring it up. Do you know if he's going to be on that uh, Black Dahlia, Frozen Soul, uh, Chelsea? I would Grand tour? assume because he's just, he's always out, uh, but I think he might be. That's cool. he's, he's been their tour manager guy for a while now, but I, I think so. Did you have a, a very memorable coffee experience in Europe because it's a different world? <laughs> hmm. You know what's funny, dude? It's like... In Europe, you can go anywhere and get a good cup of coffee. True. It's like, because there, there you, I mean, there were some places I got dirty chais and stuff. There was one place in Sweden I actually got a, a double, like a double, because usually what I do is like two shots of espresso mm-hmm. in the thing, and I'll be zooming all day. And one lady actually called it a nasty chai. Nice. And that shit hyped me up so much. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was like one of those, like, uh, it, it felt like you were in like, I guess Starbucks, but it had had like a Panera vibe, Ah. but it was a chain that's out there called something. I think it was like, Oh shit. I'm going to blow it. It's like some, some espresso, something chain or coffee, something. It was everywhere and it's in their malls. It's in their fucking strips. But, uh, the food was so fresh. I remember eating there with the creeping death dudes. And I was like, dude, you got to try this. Get the prosciutto panini because it's fucking fresh. It's all, but it's in a window, so your brain goes, "That's got to be shit." But they they make it fresh for you and stuff. It's right. so sick. But anyway, the nasty chai, she screams it out as if, you know when they're shouting out like names for orders and stuff. But she said in her sweet Sweden accent, Swedish accent, and nasty chai. I was like, "Yo, what?" <laughs> like I think it's called a nasty chai. I'm calling it that forever. You yeah. know, we. Officially, we should change the name to Nasty Chai because uh, that's like, that's just nasty. Well, she was saying the nasty means two shots, dirty is one. What? Right. See, it hits you. It hits you the same way it hit me. I was like, damn, that makes fucking sense. Yeah, because one shot, it's like, it's a little dirty, you know? Right. Two. Nasty. two it's just nasty. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was down. <laughs> I was like, yes, that makes sense. Hell yes. Oh, shit. I'm going to have yep. to, I'm going to have to put some the game people right on. Here. Yeah, that's, that's a game changing time. We just found yeah. the highlight. If it spreads and comes back to me, I know where it started. Yeah. Love we get a dollar each time we say That's it. That's why I'm you, you get a dollar. <laughs> talking about. Uh, do you like wrestling? I used to. When I was when I was a, a young lad, I was fucking obsessed. Austin 316 forever. Dude. Um, he was the he was the goat for me. And then second was like Undertaker Kane. Mm. I put them together just because I always love like those like what was the matches that they were due? The cave, uh, uh, coffin matches. Oh yeah, the coffin matches. Oh my god, how fucking exciting! If you could, uh, without any like formal repercussions, if you could do any wrestling finisher on stage on somebody, <clears throat> what would you do? I mean, my brain instantly thinks the stunner is just the hardest move because with the fingers after, like that whole like like. I love when he does the stunner and bounces back up and just flips him off and gets in his face and shit. Like that was always my favorite part. Catches the beers and smashes them together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or like the was it the pedigree was Triple H's move mm-hmm. where he put put his head between his legs and the one arm and the other arm and just slam him down. That's the that's that was another move. Yeah, stretch it behind the back. Like, God yeah, damn. yeah, 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 yeah. Damn, dude. Fuck yeah. Oh no, I'm fucking up. I'm fucking up bad. <laughs> the game I'm thinking of is a backyard wrestling game. Yeah, there's backyard wrestling. Don't try this at home. And it had ICP in the game. Like the, you, there were characters you could play. There were characters you could play. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that sick? This is unhinged. Oh my God. The cover of the game just immediately says MA rating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like completely. 
All right, but ready for this playlist? It's Anthrax, Biohazard, Bowling for Soup, CKY, Chimera, E Town Concrete, uh, ICP. Uh, what else we got? Rancid. Uh, we got Sepultura, Shadows Fall, Spine Shank, Sum 41, because that's funny. And then yeah. Twisted. And then uh, there was another one in here 40 Below Summer. It's just like. Can we E Town Concrete was on that? That's crazy. Yeah, E Town Doormats. That's the song, dude. Oh man, back when you could listen to E Town Concrete and not feel a little bit guilty. Nope, I can I can <laughs> listen to it all day long. Still, they are they're still one of my favorites. I have the they're most so good. I have the most ignorant fucking full on white and black camo E Town E Town fuck the world hoodie <laughs> somewhere. And uh, dude, that's the brain I still have forever. I'll I'll never leave that shit. Hate breed E Town Biohazard and like. What do I play on my stream all the time? It's always that kind of shit. This is what I'm I'm curious of because there's always I feel like this weird divide between hardcore and metal, and there's bands like Biohazard and Anthrax that have at points branched over and bridged the gap between a lot of these genres. Yeah. But there seems to be this animosity between scenes where it's like no karate in the pit, or like you know, like metal just, is like this and that. It's like how does somebody like you that comes from like hardcore deathcore roots get into like a very prog driven style of music. Um, I, I, I can't be any different and I can't fake it either. So when I'm at these shows or I, it's hard to say, dude, because like, I'm going to say some shit that's going to sound crazy to the outsider <laughs> is we came off of a tour with rivers of Nile and Fallujah in the States and then we did a tour in the States with Revocation and uh, Crisian, mm -hmm. all death metal shit. Shout out Inoculation too, and mm -hmm. on that tour. I would say there was very mediocre pits. Right after that Revocation tour, like we had seven days of just bullshit filler shows to get to the next tour we were doing, which was Animals as Leaders and Car Bomb. Yeah. Let me tell you, those rooms were fucking out of control. Car Bomb. And Animals. Really? Yes, 100%. Dude, we were opening out of, out of a one out of three package. The first song we play, Circle Pit. Like, people are going nuts. We've never toured with those bands before. We, we're like, we're new to that crowd. And I know myself, and I think this is where the metal hardcore dude is. It's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait till the part I like, and then I'll mosh. But these motherfuckers are like, yo, start playing. Like, I need to go. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, that's insane. And then, like, um, because I went into that tour, like, I don't want to say hesitant, but I was excited to learn how that world mm -hmm. reacts or responds to us. But I was very like, ooh, I don't know. Are they going to like think we're too death metal or too this or too that? But damn, dude, like they, dude, I see dudes in like the pit for animals with vital remains hoodies just bouncing. I'm like, yo, word. Like, uh, like they're, they're, I think the problem or the, 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 the benefit that they have is there's no egos attached. Mm -hmm. Or I think the hardcore scene and death metal scene. More so the hardcore scene because it's like the, the hardcore scene has weird egos attached because you'll see it with like bands that just show up and no one's heard of, but like their homies that are like backed say it's good. Now they're a good band, which whatever, if mm -hmm. that's how the world works, and so it's always, it's always going to be that way. People have such a, a fandom or respect, call it that, uh, amongst others' opinions for that kind of stuff. If, if someone's like, doing real well socially it's like oh cool that band's cool they're, they're really nice dudes you know but then like for that for like the bigger metal world all they care about is do you have songs like if you got <laughs> songs let me show up and just fuck around and enjoy the shit out of it you know that's really how it goes mm -hmm. because they're, the, the bigger those fan bases they don't get they're not involved in like the politics of who that band is friends with and who they're associated with you know what i mean where hardcore you know every like you can see in your mind, when you see a band play, you know, they're top eight, you know, yeah. like for, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you see, like, I'm trying to think, uh, maybe I'm a little out of touch with like how many bands, like I just saw the LDB fest and I'm just like, or L LBD, LDB, L LDB, I always yeah. make it up. LDB. Yeah. And so like, um, I always think like hip hop shit. I'm like LDB, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Me. <laughs> you know, but like, um, that whole lineup, like I know, like, maybe a handful of the, band, of the bands on there, but like you see all these bands getting grouped together on the same tours, Yeah, you know, like, um, uh, for instance, I, I love the vomit fourth dudes. 
Yeah. So I always associate them to like Sanguasuga Bog, or right? mm -hmm. I associate them to 200 uh, Stab Yeah, to that whole circle right now, Frozen Soul and all that stuff. The so Magus it's like Stomp stuff. Right. But it's just, but it's, it's the fact that you know to say that word to me right now with maggot stomp. So it's like there's that there's the politics of like, oh, that's a that's a group band that we know. If you like this one, you'll get into this one. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to build these bands. But when you have like new bands that are coming up that are just kind of like solo lone wolves, people don't know like, should I listen to it? Should I check it out? Should, right. Is this am I gonna like it? Especially, oh my god, if you can't judge the album art, oh my god, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's album you're, you're, art is everything now. <laughs> Dude, oh my god. It's like, oh shit, how are we gonna how are we gonna how can I hit play on this? It doesn't have a pit bull on it. Like, I can't get into this. <laughs> you know, it's it doesn't just look like, like obscure eighties like hip hop yeah. graffiti. Or it's yeah. not Dan Seagrave artwork. Oh my god, is this even oh, brutal? Yeah. Dude, yeah. If it's not Dan Seagrave, I toss it out. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> no, but I mean, but it's such a, it is such a weird thing that I've observed. I know we were talking about more like mosh, but like, I guess just that's one thing I've learned between the different, you know, parties. But mm -hmm. in terms of like pitting and stuff, it's very weird how, um, like, I mean, East Coast, I uh, like, I still think is the most violent that I've ever seen. But Hands like, down. then I'm, but then I'm surprised because when we go play Munich. In, in Germany, it's fucking ins like first song. They're doing Wall of Deaths on their own without me saying anything. So I'm just like, holy shit. But then you go play fucking anywhere else in Germany. And they're like, I like the one song with that part. And that was OK. I'm like, OK, shit. You know, I'm, I think I think we're sucking. But like, they're just <laughs> focused. You know, they're just paying attention. I don't know if you're a, are you a hard lore fan? Have you heard of this podcast? Oh, uh, is that um Bo and Colin? Twitching tongues, dude. Right? Yeah, 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 and, and yeah, yeah. I've, I've I've heard of it. I haven't I haven't tuned in. They had they were talking on an episode recently with uh uh Jake from in Judiciary. Okay. And they were talking about playing in Europe and how basically every comment you get is backhanded in some way. Yeah. Yeah. It was in Germany that he was like basically oh, yeah. in a roundabout way called him fat. It was so funny, but yeah, <laughs> it's like a, a yeah. running joke in in American bands that. Like whenever you go play Europe, just be ready to receive. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, like we got we we didn't get any sort of horror stories. Um, I think the biggest thing that I take as an insult is just no mosh pit because I'm just like, how do how do you do this? You know, how are you just? I mean, but then it would it would be really funny because we have a song called "The Putrid Sunrise" that's very um, alcohol focused, if you will, because the song is all about like. You know, getting fucked up with your friends, kicking in doors, fucking throwing shit on the street, fucking shit, like getting into fights, yeah. doing blow and freaking out. And and then the chorus is more like, I told myself I'm not going to keep doing this, but I'm going to keep doing it anyway. And then like, there's this dwelly part that has like a hangover part. And then it comes back because you had another beer and your brain's like, all right, fuck it. Let's keep going. <laughs> um, but every time I'm like, who's drinking? I do like this little like. Who's drinking tonight? For uh, and everyone raises their glasses. I'm like, this one goes out to you. I want to see you in the fucking room. And they look at me like, ah, but I just bought this beer. I don't want to. Spill <laughs> I'm beer. just. I'm always like, fuck, man. I guess enjoy your beer, dude. And you know, I'm not gonna force <laughs> you to chug it. But like, I think of myself because I remember there was a show I played with Merciless, and I I think about the show often. It was 2013. Hate breed, Shadows Fall, Dying Fetus the contortionist in us opening and fetus was opening uh, about to start their set. And I had just bought a fresh new PBR. Oh no. And dude, I'm telling someone a story about like, Oh, you got to watch this band. Like fetus is probably like my right now, my favorite band, like yeah. they've been forever, but like they're one of the last remaining forces that is so loud and strong in like the brutal world. Yeah. And they're so ignorant and so awesome. That's what like, I love is the ignorance. Yeah, That's but, my it, favorite. but they're true to what they want to hear, dude. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it shows every song that like that new, the new two songs they put out are just like hate breed appraisal, like hate breed uh, uh, appreciation where the, the breakdown on the clothes, hi hat. Yeah, it's so <laughs> good. It's all satisfaction riffs. But then it's like, they are hardcore dudes that also do death metal and they know that they know their fan base. They know what people want to hear. Anyway, mm -hmm. they're setting up the show. And like they're doing like this all like ominous fucking sounds and stuff. And I'm telling someone about them like, oh, you got to check them out. 
Uh, there's this one song I love from them. I always play all the time. They never play it live though, but da 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 da. And as I'm saying it, I said, uh, they play this. I love the song Schematics. They never play it live though. Dude, they open with Schematics. I took this beer and just fucking whoo, just yeeted it across the room <laughs> and started moshing with everybody. I was just like, dude, there's no way I'm, I'm holding that for fucking four minutes. No way. See, that's, that is a thing that I've noticed in a lot. Well, I don't know if it's like American or can it, cause in Canada, like Montreal, especially is a metal, like stronghold. Like got out to Foofs, dude, dude, Foofs. I love Plus, Foofs. Club Soda has a lot of great shows. M Telus, I saw Cannibal Corpse, uh, and Dark Funeral on that most recent tour with, oh, nice. uh, Emm- Immolation. Immolation. Yeah. yeah. I, I kept thinking inoculation, um, <laughs> but it's Immolation. Diff- completely different band. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's all the shuns, dude. I get it. But yeah, um, I mean, just the metal shows in Montreal are fucking insane. Like I, I was sitting in the balcony because I wanted to drink my beer mm-hmm. and I looked at down. Foofs. No, not at Foofs. Oh. At Mtelis. Oh, gotcha. Sorry, is, sorry. It's, it's next door. It's next. It, but it's like a much bigger venue. Okay. Um, I looked down and it's just literally like the pit is insane. Yeah. And it's amazing. Yeah. I love so, it. Montreal is known for like loving metal. We will ditch. We will ditch beers, basically. Like we will. Oh, there you go. Like there Montreal go. will come unhinged, and you'll yeah. just see fucking beers flying through the Coconese air. Coconies just flying everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Co- what? Coconies or like I would call them cocaines. Those, those bottled beers you guys have, they're like Coors Light comparisons. That's uh, we got the Pabst. We got the PBR. Sorry, everybody here calls it Pabst, but it's PBR. Yeah, same, same, same. Uh, PBR uh, extra. It's the blue can, and instead of four point. Or whatever the it's like four point six. Sure. Is the normal one. They the one here is five point nine. Oh nice. Uh so yeah, it's great. Same price. Kind of, it's oh, huge. Yeah. Double, over double over time I just kinda like stopped drinking beers. Now I'm just full like full blown Jameson Coke. It's my move. The you gotta ditch the calories. Me. Yeah, but nah. <laughs> ditch, <laughs> it's ditch. just it's it's you know what it's just tastes like it's like if I have a bunch of beers I'm just bloated and full and can't keep the festivities going and yeah. I'm like all right well now I gotta like shit <laughs> now I'm full and I'm I'm just like I feel like I had three meals and I'm just trying to have a good time we're like with Jameson I can make a cocktail with it like a JMO Coke or like I can whip a few shots back and just forget I drank and then just throughout your night it's going loose and getting fun but that's just where I've been. What's your poison of choice other than beer? Uh, so I actually drink a lot more cocktails than I do. There beer. we go. I, I've been on a Jameson uh, ginger kick recently. Hell yeah! And most people are. I think if you're drinking Jamo with anything, I'm. I'm like I. People always give me the face of like, oh, I wonder why you would do coconut ginger. My answer is because it's you get like with Jameson ginger. When I drink it, I taste them separately. Mm-hmm. They don't like mix in like my palate I'll, I'll be like oh I, that, that there's the whiskey and then there's the ginger ale you know where where the jmo coke it's like a whole infusion that happens for me where it's like sweet and still good but like i don't like jack daniels at all so mm-hmm. like if you made me a jack and coke i would know and i'm just like this is just too sweet like this is just crazy where jmo kind of like the same way i like my dirty chives it has that little bite at the end but it's sweet most of the time is the jmo coke I find that the Jameson's more like, because it's Irish whiskey, it's got a bit more peat. Oh, yeah. Uh, pretentious word alert, but peat. Yeah. Uh, and that kind of cuts through while, mm-hmm. like you said, the Jack, it's just molassesy yeah. bourbon. Yes. Yes. So That's sweet. Where I'm just like, I hate this. This is yeah. not, this is not, like, I'm going to be so hungover and it's not going to be worth it. And I'm not even going to get as drunk as I want because I'm just fucking, I don't know, it's just all sugar. It's Your heavy. body's just going, what the fuck is this? Yeah, I feel that. That's I. That's why I went the Jameson route. Um, and if I'm feeling bougie, some tealing. Yeah, nice. If you want to spend Teeling's a couple. Nice. Of- I was just in Ireland and I was pissed off because I was like the one day I was really looking forward to and I got sick. No. So then I was just like, I had this awful like nose, chest, sinus thing going on. So I just stayed in the venue and I went to one bar up the road, but I was lucky enough that the one bar I went to was like, 2018's rated best bar by Anthony Bourdain. So I was like, all right, this should be enough to like check off my Ireland experience. And I got this sick fucking carrot ginger soup with Irish soda bread and the Irish butter. And I got like a hot toddy 
with like Oof. all that shit. And the way they do hot toddies there is different where they have these like lemons and they stick these, um, uh, what do they call them? They're like seeds, but they're, they're like, uh, they're like, uh, uh, juni- they're juniper berries, right? Aren't they? Something like that, but they call them something else. They call them like knots. So they call them, uh, stems or some shit like that. Cause I, I remember asking the bartender, like, well, what is it from? They're like, I don't know. It's just this, <laughs> like you just buy a tub of them. And I'm like, oh, okay. But they're so good too. But yeah, I was drinking a shitload of Jameson that night and I got to give a shout out to Zach Dean, my drummer. He was a sweet lad. I wanted to go to like the Jameson distillery and all that stuff, but I didn't get to go. Look what he got me as a gift for the, for the listeners at home, dude. He got oh, me he got di- you the distillery edition. Yeah, and it gets my fucking name printed on it and stuff. So hard. Oh, wait, it's on the it's on the back. Check that out, dude. And it's wait, on the bottle. Dublin might be like if somebody was like, you have to go live a year in some random city, and your rent's paid for and everything. Yep. Dublin, Dublin is that city without yeah. hesitation. How sick were the people? I will. I I don't know if I've ever. I'm from the south. Like I'm from Georgia. Okay. Where it's like hospitality and everything, like people sure. are friendly. Dublin is the nicest place I have ever been. Yeah, everybody yeah. wants to talk to you. It's Everyone weird. wants to be in your face, but in the best way. Like they're yes. not, they're not like punishers in the sense where they're not like annoying. Like it's just like I was. All right, so that show I had no voice. Like talking before this, I was like this. <laughs> and I was like, "Fuck, how am I going to get through this show?" But I was panicking all before. I get on stage. And I make like a small announcement, like, oh, I lost my voice. I'm sorry. But then, dude, we start playing and there's some phlegm that just caught in my chest that saved the night. Mm-hmm. I was able to perform all the songs just the way you know them. And I would stop and like when the song ended, I was like, hey, you. like I, my talking voice was fucked. But doing vocals, I was fine. And dude, after the set, everyone was so friendly and just coming up to me like, you fucking liar. You fucking lie. Come get a drink. I, I made a joke. like I love James and Coke. So. Dude, all night they were just like, "Did you get your Jameson? If come, if not, come with me. I'll get you that." And, and they were just oh. so sick. Everyone was so fucking awesome. Yeah, I'm so sick. I want to go back so bad. I've been talking about it a bunch. I I've been trying to figure out a way to take any band that I play in to. Do- it's so expensive, but it is because if- you got to you got to fly in. You got to take the ferry over. You got to go through customs through the UK, and then yeah, like we only played for that one day, so we had to play. I think we played like you said, uh, London. Was it London and then Manchester or was it London? And then we hit, yeah, I think it was Manchester and then we hit there or then we ended up back in Manchester. I don't know. Either way, we yeah. were in Dublin for just one day. We took the ferry in, played, and then had to take the ferry out the same night. So oh, it was man. just like, fuck, dude. Like the travel sucked, but it was worth it. It was definitely a lot of fun. Yeah. If you can get there, it's, yeah. it's so fucking great. Uh, the yeah. food is insane. Like yeah. people, they, they, people don't give them the credit that they deserve for food. Like, like um, everyone thinks their food is very like bland, but it's like the food that they're aware of, they know how to fucking cook well, like soups, sauces mm-hmm. and like steaks and like, like your, your home hearty meals. They do so well over there. If you want a, a, a well-cooked potato and braised beef of any kind, yes, that is the staple. Fuck yeah. They like took all of the food and then made it good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's but like even just everything they and they they rag on the UK so much but they're fucking with them and their sense of humor and their sense of like person is so sick. That's the one thing I really love is like everyone when you're talking to people they just all seem very unique. No one's mm-hmm. like riding each other's coattails and fucking around. It's just like I don't know. That's the only way I could say it. It's just everyone was so fucking nice and straightforward and like it was almost like it's like if UK people became New Yorkers yeah that's what it felt like and maybe that's why i felt so comfortable because i was like yo these people are fucking sick like they're just walking up to me hanging out like i i love that where some you know some places are like scared to talk to you but then when they gain the confidence they don't know how to start a conversation they're just kind of like looking through your soul like hey how was your shit i was like you saw it was good it was fine thank you goodbye thanks (laughs) but they're like oh they armpit you and they're like want to get drinks i fucking love that shit dude yeah, uh, that's that place left a scar on my soul. So good. Um, a wound not, that just has to be filled. That's all. Yes, that's it. There's a giant Ireland shaped hole in my my heart, and I must go back. Oh um, yeah, sarcoma. Mm. Twenty twenty one. I know that it's been out for a while. 
kind of feels crazy how fast it's going, how, how fast time has been going. It's like, I remember being in the studio when working on that. And now it's like, oh, that's out and gone. And we have to start writing new stuff. Yeah. And y'all toured on it for like an entire, it's been almost a year and a half or almost three years, I guess. Uh, well, you know, 21, there was no touring going on. Anything we were getting booked just kept getting canceled and rescheduled. We, our first tour was supposed to be a banger. It was supposed to be like in Europe with Thy Art is Murder, Malevolence, Justice for the Damned. Um, there's a few others on that list that were really, uh, that band Alpha Wolf. Oh yeah, dude. Um, it was, yeah, we, it was supposed to be a, a fat stack lineup, but then it was like, apparently the fourth time that tour had been re-promoted and rebooked because all these bands kept like being like, all right, this is too far in advance. COVID's fucking things up. And this band dropped off, this band dropped off. And I think for that lineup, I think Thy Art took some Lamb of God gig and Malev took uh, some other gig and it was just kind of like, all right, nope, this is over. Mm -hmm. um, so we were screwed on that and all the tours we did so far, we're all just kind of like, we don't know what we're doing for the rest of the year. Hey, homies, like, do you guys have anything? I think Wes went to a river show and was talking to Brody and it was like, dude, do you guys have room on that river? He's like, yeah. I was like, okay, that's, <laughs> that's, and that's how all of our tours have been booked so far, you nice. know, with revocation. I mean, we're, we, we're, we're tight with all those guys, but I think again, Wes was talking with Dave and something came out of that. Animals as leaders, Javier, you know, it's just, it's kind of how this world works. If you're like, yeah, there's a lot of booking agents and things like that that are moving, but it's easy. It, nowadays, it's like, oh, do you want to go out and hang out for a month? Mm -hmm. Sure, let's go. Let's figure out, let's put our names in a, in, to the people that set it up now, you know? But we were happy to get those tours out. I mean, it's it's cool considering, like I said, there was not a lot of booking going on, but for us to be able to get out and actually tour and see how people react to the record. And, and we played a lot of crowds that, maybe we didn't think would come across our shit nat naturally organically. Mm -hmm. So like we played the death metal crowds, we played the animals crowds and we like, we we're, we're, we're ready to, we want to be the band that can play for anyone. We want right. to play hardcore shows. We want to play death metal shows. We want to play all that shit. You know, like it's, it's cool that, you know, that's the energy we want to put out. Cause even when me and Wes are driving, we're blasting crowbar, we're blasting fucking like necrophagia and fucking, mm -hmm like old Pantera, old super joint and like just anything that's raw and angry is what gets us going. And I can't wait to start the new record. I think that's the, the angle we want on the next one. It's just scarier, meaner, sadder, sadder and meaner. Yeah. Yeah. It's more like, with a purpose, more like a, a sharp dagger in your chest, but like you want to feel it again, <laughs> you know, I do. I love listening to, uh, to the the one that's out like was it 40 steps 40 stories 40 stories sorry such a beautiful song and then yeah. it like comes in with like the aggression but it's like all throughout there's like this beautiful like melody it's so mm -hmm. like i love listening to that song okay. it's like mind blowing it's a fun one for us to play i mean we 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 play that one live a bunch on the first tour and then mm -hmm. we kind of started playing a bunch of the faster stuff on the second tours just to keep the rooms moving yeah. Because that song, when people get hit with it, are just kind of like, what is happening right now? <laughs> like, well, because we open with like two heavy ass songs. Mm -hmm. And then like we we would open usually with uh, Anodyne, which is the last song on that record. But on this run, we were op on the previous runs, we were opening with like Ulysses, mm -hmm. which pretty much goes in order of the album. We right. were doing the first track, second track, and then 40. And people were like, what? <laughs> like, that's... That's interesting. Or no, we were doing 40 on the fourth track. Anyway, anyway, but it was just, we were coming out of songs and then like after 40, the room's quiet and like sitting with us in this moment. And then we're like, all right, spin that fucking pit. This one's called the future sunrise. And the whole room's like, I'm like, I'm like emotional right now. What happened? <laughs> and what, what was that change of pace that just happened? You know, but it's, it's cool to get that response from first time listeners, but mm -hmm. there, but I always feel bad because there's like, the 20 or 30 people in the room for a certain show that they're like, Oh, I wanted to hear you play 40. But next time when we have a longer set, we'll get in there. Yeah. It's definitely, uh, it, it's cool to break the pace. I, I like that. Like I like <laughs> where it's not just like banger after banger, right? Like pounding you, but I, I could see like introducing yourself to people. Yeah. They don't want to, especially sit in this. Europe. It's like, I want to keep this energy up. And yeah. it's like, th I know they're going to like the song, but I think in my brain, it's like the trick here on a Europe tour is to make them go home and listen to us more. 
Exactly. You know, we want to sell them here, maybe pick up a shirt, you know, come go home, listen to it, real like realize what you witnessed and help us come back again so we can play a longer set and you can get all these fucking songs. Right. But I'm glad you I'm glad you checked out Sarcoma, dude, and I I we're excited to do more. Uh was there any other notable tracks for you? I do actually like Ulysses. Mm. Ulysses. Ulysses. Uly- Ulysses. It's a really hard word to say, by the way. I mean, some people do say it both ways. It's uh, we say Ulysses. Um, it's it, Ulysses because it's a it's a name, you know. Uh, Ulysses is the name of like a fucking Civil War general. Yeah, some shit like that. I <laughs> honestly don't know, <laughs> but uh, the song has got some deep, sick meaning, and the song is that was our premiere song, mm-hmm. and uh, it was cool to kind of let the world kind of take that in right during like peak ending of covid time um yeah it's a song that's got everything it's got breakdowns it's got fast fucking picking it's like crazy time little signature parts some yeah. death metal stabs you know but we try to throw it around as much as we can so i'm i'm really bad at listening to like super like animals as leaders i respect those dudes as musicians mm-hmm. wholeheartedly i don't i it's so difficult for me to like listen to mm-hmm. just because i have to think so hard. All that to say with Alluvial, when I listen to it, there are parts that scratch the itch, even though mm. there's a lot of progginess in it and a yeah. lot of kind of post metal. The post metal yeah. elements are like something that I really love. Mm. It's like this very heavy rhythm and energy, but kind of with that like droney guitar and, and yeah. like melodic elements. So just listening to the album, like while I'm working, it's super relaxing, but it's like a journey. So yeah. I, I do really like like those elements in alluvial compared yeah. to like the more proggy stuff, like the deep. <laughs> yeah. Thumpy. Yeah. I mean, for us, like alluvial is always something that we want to kind of shed light on all of our personal interests. You mm-hmm. know, like me and Wes come from two different cloths of this industry or, or, you know, cause I mean, my history is all brutal death shit. Yeah. Um, Wes has been inv- involved with death metal bands with, like progressive bands and and like shit like Devin Townsend and like he's he's been involved but he's also played with like Virus Murder he's done mm-hmm. all this sh- he sh- he's so well tuned and so like up to speed with what's going on in the world where I'm very stuck in my lane but like putting our heads together he's opened me up to stuff I've opened him up to stuff and I'm excited to see how that evolves us over time like we were just talking we were on the phone the other day just talking to like where do we want to take this thing? You know, like what's the next move, like next sounds you want to create? I was like, I want to, I want to hone in on what we've already done, but make it more, you know, like, <laughs> like, like how you're saying like progressive notes and this stuff and prog stuff. Like we are trying to, I don't want to say leave the prog world, but it's more like we want you to, there's going to be elements of everything and everything we do, mm-hmm. but we want us to just be us. You know, we, it's so hard, even like right before I even joined the band, if I was ever in conversation, I was like, I don't know where to place this. Mm -hmm. Cause it's got like, if you, you know, there, there, there's, there's just, we want open breakdowns. We want big old vocal breaks with disgustingness. We want blast beats. We want choruses. We want harmony. We want, we want all the things from all the different worlds of metal. And we don't want us, we don't want to do that thing where we fall into a certain group or a certain genre and now you're stuck there, you know, like, right. like, um, that's why I, I love that. Even with sarcoma, we can play a death core tour. We can play a brutal death metal tour and still fit in and still play the shows and still get the room moving. You know, mm-hmm. um, that's my favorite. That's my mission. You know, that's that's cool. it. you'll you never know. not have a job. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the plan. Right. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's sick. I mean, you know, I want to. I want songs to be like old Machine Head. I want mm-hmm. songs to be like new, decapitated. Like I, I want like the fast. I want the slow. I want the heavy, the fucking feeling. You know, it's just you don't want to hit play and know what you're gonna get. Right. That's it. Leave them guessing. That's it, um, bro. What are the plans y'all are writing? Any uh, any tour plans coming up? There's uh, some stuff on the horizon. But nothing I can talk about just yeah. yet. Um, all I can say is that we're, our our roadmap is that we're trying to put out something by the fall, 
And after that, the world is ours. Um, I want to pour a bunch on this next one and I want people to really check it out. And I want to, I want this next one to be shoved in people's faces. That's, that's my mission. Just get it out there. Nice. Make everyone hear it. Well, it. hopefully we'll be seeing y'all in, in Montreal. If not the fall winter, then, uh, sometime. that's the mission. I think I, I, we want to tour at the end of the year for sure. Cool. Yeah. So everybody good. will be on the lookout for new alluvial. As soon as the singles come out, just spin them. Just yeah. put them on repeat. Yeah. Play the yeah, videos. We, we got some concepts already with like videos and stuff. It's going to be gross. It's going to mm -hmm. be gross. Like we want it to be like not, uh, how do I say it? It's it's just um, like emotion felt like how you said about 40, like how it's a beautiful song. Yeah. That song's about like guided suicide. You know what oh. I mean? And, and it's just dark. The message in that song is just very interesting, mm -hmm. but, but it hits you beautifully. Cause yes. that's the the idea in that song. And it's like, Man. everything's got a reason, you know? And I want that context to continue on to the next one, mm -hmm. but darker. We're more pissed on this next one. Oh shit. Well, I <laughs> love, I love pissed music. So yeah, dude. <laughs> now I stay alive. Uh, well, Kevin, I really appreciate you hanging out. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, oh, I, yeah. just, I have one last question for you before we go. Sure. What's your favorite city for beans and breakdowns? Favorite city? Yeah. Does it have to be in the States? No. Favorite city. I think we talked about it. Fuck. Dublin might be it right now, but favorite shit. I got to give the States a, an honorable vote though. Um, for beans and breakdowns. Hmm. Chicago's a good one. Chicago's a good one. Um, Hmm. I gotta get I gotta get one more in there. Otherwise it won't feel right. Beans and breakdowns. Fuck. I'm trying to think who's got both, you know? I would say Pittsburgh's always there. But they, they got some it's like if you're going for beans there, it's like it's gotta be some like little deli bodega vibes. Yeah. What and about then, anywhere at West Coast? West Coast? I don't give them credit for breakdowns. They just want to go fast. You don't like Seattle? Seattle got breakdowns. I lived in Seattle for a little while, so maybe that's why I don't really like it as much. But oh. like, tell me who's got breakdowns in Seattle. Never mind. Let's go back to the East Coast. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going to say, like, who's got one right now, dude? Uh, Seattle, I don't really staple them as like a, a like a death metal or a hardcore spot. I know like some bands around like Portland area. Mm-hmm. Maybe, but it's scarce over there. Pittsburgh, everywhere you look, you can throw a rock and there's breakdowns. That's true. Um, Chicago, same thing. They got those bands right now. They Chicago's got some cool bands. What's that band? Sector that's from out there. Um, where's Gridiron from? Gridiron is a mix of Delaware and Michigan because mm. okay. it's members from other bands. Well, right. Tyler used to be in Year of the Knife. But now he, I think he's just in gridiron. Gotcha. Gotcha. Wasn't one of those guys in, uh, uh, not someone cold, told me. Not What's cold that? As, other, huh? Not cold as life. No, um, but that other one that sounds like them, but goofier. Not in, in a nice way I say goofier because they're bouncier. Uh, oh, uh, never ending game. Oh, uh, uh, I think it is members of never ending game as well. That's what I thought. And when I said, you know what I mean by it's like not goofy, but it's got like a, bouncy. Yeah, it's very bouncy, but it's yeah. fun though. That's why I love Gridiron because they they add like it's the most metallic hardcore. Like it sounds like it's like a, a death metal or extreme right. metal band. I mean, yeah, it's hardcore. it's just brutal parts with like sick vocal shit with on it. Rapping. <laughs> yeah. I, but then it's so funny, even when I started hearing them. I like I, I love enemy mind and shit. I filled in for them in Europe once, and those dudes are just some of my favorite people. Um, but like I was listening to one of their songs and of course they had, they had Mike in there for guest vocals. I was like, they would like, this is what, <laughs> this is who they should have in there for sure. But, uh, yeah, it's so sick. I love them. Yeah. They're sick. Great Iron's definitely like one of my top five hardcore bands right now, just cause they're all fucking amazing musicians. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, I wanted to see them at, uh, I went to this is hardcore for oh. hate breed. Yeah. Just because they're, they're like, they're like my unreplaceable number one 
in terms of just like the hardcore kings for me. Yeah. With satisfaction, perseverance, like you can't, those are untoppable things. But um, in terms of like new bands like that, Gridiron's definitely up there. Uh, Malevolence is up there. Um, i trying to think. There's not a lot on that list. Yeah. Volcano. Volcano. I wanted to talk to you about Volcano because I feel like that's up your alley. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's like grooves, grooves for days. Dude, I have a fun story fucking... Uh, is it's named Cody, right? Cody, I'm I'm so bad with names. Cody, I don't dr- know. This it's Sango Sugabog's drummer. Okay, it, it's I believe Volcano is said and Cody. I always want to say Corey, but I feel like I'm wrong. I think it's Cody. It makes but, sense with the snare sound, though. That it right. would be right, so so, but he but he plays guitar in Volcano. Oh, okay. So so it's him and said on guitar and bass, and he writes apparently all the riffs for Volcano. But like, I don't know how much I don't know who does the writing in Sango Sugabog, but like. I remember seeing Sanguish Sugabog with Niall at oh. Gramercy and me and Devin and Cody and Seth all went to a bar up the road and I was just giving them praise. I was like, yo, Volcano's dope, you know? <laughs> and and he and Cody was wearing this like 2X Volcano shirt just with the graffiti logo and he was so sick. He stands up, he's like, I want you to have this. It's our last <laughs> one. It's our last one with the logo shirt. You want it? I was like... I mean, yeah, dude, fine. And he gives me the shirt. And I'm like, that's the sh- illest shit right there, dude. Those dudes are so nice. So sick. Kevin, again, thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your, your son. Dude, go see Barrier Dead because that's fucking dope. Yeah, yeah. I saw something last minute that they're playing here, so I might go check that out. But uh, yeah, man, thanks for having me on. Listeners, get stay caffeinated. Get some fucking dirty, nasty chais in you, you know? Get a nasty chai. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. I'm about to make a second one. I'm about to be Zooming today. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Take care. <laughs> you too, bro. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Beans and Breakdowns. I want to say a huge thanks to Kevin for hanging out on the podcast. Be sure to check out Sarcoma, the most recent release from Alluvial, and be on the lookout for a new album announcement later this year, hopefully with some tour dates to follow. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe and leave a review. You can find out more information about the podcast by following us on Instagram at Beans and Breakdowns or on the web at beansandbreakdowns.com. Until next week, be sure to stay caffeinated and wake the fuck up.